do that. Okay, and hello everybody. Welcome to the Ladies Power Lunch Studios, which you probably are aware is just my office. We are here today with the incomparable Gina Johnson. Gina, in my opinion, is sort of the business whisperer. If you have something that's going on with your business and you can't quite figure it out, I'd always recommend go talk to Gina because she always has really, really great advice and really, really, really sound business principles upon which she builds this advice. I have personally, I have to admit, let's just put that disclaimer out there. I have personally taken advantage of her services and I have found her to be outstanding. So I expect no less if you happen to come into her sphere of brilliance. So today we are having our pre-note power hour. Coming up on the 21st of September, we have our fall summit. And our fall summit, our summits for this year have been themed Transformation 2020. The intention when we went into 2020 was that it's the, the transformation was going to be a little bit different, but who knew that we were going to be forced into a state of transformation, whether we like it or not. And so it's perfect that we're having our fall summit and it's perfect that our focus for our workshops during the summit, uh, the focus is going to definitely be looking at the obstacles that we have faced for 2020 so far and focusing on the opportunities that are there for us. How can we really turn things around? People have been using this word pivot. I'm not a big fan, but how can we turn things around? How can we use all that is happening to our benefit? And so today we'd love to give you a taste of what we have to offer for the fall summit and gina is going to be one of our presenters on the fall summit and she has so kindly offered to come up here today and do a workshop with us so gina would you go ahead and introduce yourself to the group i can't hear you because you're still muted Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, I'm still pulling up my slides. So thank you for those kind words, Davia. Um, I, I love getting women together, and I feel like this is such a, an important time of year. Um, I decided to take my call outside. How's the background noise? A little, is it loud? It's fine. It's perfect. It's beautiful. So, thank you. <laughs> I have a beautiful office, but today was such a lovely day. I just decided, what the heck, I'm going to sit outside in my deck and... Uh, take the call outside. So this is a business inventory. And so what we're talking about today is working in your zone of genius. And we sometimes we think we are working in our zone of genius and, and but then sometimes we're stuck, right? And we might knock on a door that just will not open and we're like, why is thing why is this so hard? Why is this so hard? Well it is it's because we're not in our zone of genius. So I put together this workshop and uh, you posted the, the PDF. So if you don't have the PDF, don't worry about it. I'm gonna, um, hopefully my slides will pull up here. Uh, Google Drive is a little slow this morning. So um, I'm gonna go through the slides. And you might, as you're going through it, you might feel like, what does this have to do with working in my zone of genius? Well, as you know, Davia and I are very spiritual and, and we lead with our intuition and, and as a business owner, you have to understand where you're at to understand where you're going. And the first exercise we're going to do is, is sort of a taking inventory. And it's a rating each area of your life where you're at right now because you've never been in this place. So you may have done the circle of life wheel at some point in your life, but never right now where we are with COVID today, right? So we're going to go through this this little uh, slide presentation and grab a notebook. If you were able to print the PDF, great. If not, you can always go back to it because there is a lot of information that you'll be writing down. So I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to print out the, the PDF if they like while I uh, pull up my slides. And then we're going to take a little business inventory of our life and to discover what our zone of genius is. And Gina, while you go ahead and pull up your slides and everybody takes an opportunity to 
print out their PDF, I just want to acknowledge some of the women who've taken the time out to hang out with us on Zoom today. So I want to say hi to Lynn. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Candy. Hi, Jackie. And if you guys will just um, unmute for a sec, just a very short sec, and just starting with Lynn, and then Marianne, and then Candy, then Jackie, just say quickly who you are and what your business is. Hi, good morning or good afternoon. Lynn Gallant. I am a health and nutrition uh, educator with a platform of Juice Plus Tower Garden and now Clean Crafted Wines from Scout and Cellar. I work with people to try to create wholeness in their lives um, just through uh, finding out what they're looking for and how I can help create that with them. Awesome. And so just for the people who are watching the replay for them to see the sorts of different types of businesses that can be impacted by a workshop with Gina. I'm really, really excited for those of you who are on the call to just share a little bit. So Marianne, hi, welcome. Who are you? What do you do? I'm Marianne Pack and I have MariannePack.com and I am a spiritual guide to help people kind of fine tune what their desire is and, and fine tune how to manifest it faster. So. Awesome. All right. So we have Lynn, who is a health and wellness educator. We have Marianne, who is a love attraction coach. Candy, are you in a position to unmute yourself? I am. Hello. I hope I'm coming in loud and clear. Loud and uh, clear from Germany. <laughs> so Candy Sterling, I am a personal brand strategist. My business is on her mission and I help female experts generate more buzz about their brilliance and what they offer and what they do. And I'm super excited to be joining you guys today from across the pond, as they say. <laughs> awesome. And so Candy is a branding expert. This is fantastic that you're here, Candy, because at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about our next pre-note, which you will be leading. So that will be very, very good for us to mention. And then Jackie, are you in a position to unmute yourself at all? I am, and thank you so much. And Gina, I'm really looking forward to your presentation. This has been awesome. What a great way for me to spend my birthday lunch. Happy um, birthday! Thank you. <laughs> um, so I uh, am Jack Golden Baldwin, and I'm a financial architect with B&L Financial Architects. I specialize in working with women, who, especially who are going through transitions, um, to help them create a financial plan to weather any storm. So I think this is perfect. Thank you, Jackie. Happy birthday from all of us. I think this is perfect because we have somebody from the health and wellness sphere. We have somebody who's more on the spiritual side of things. We have somebody who's in that marketing and branding space, and we have somebody who's in the financial services. I feel like as far as business goes and life in general, we've kind of hit all the major points. So universe, there are no accidents keep watching the movie. It's all unfolding as we would love for it to. So Gina is sharing her screen and Gina, I'm going to hand back over to you to uh, share your brilliance with us. Why, thank you. Okay. Here we go. So again, I'm going to walk through these exercises here. Let me find my little, this is taking inventory of your business. And I'll just, there we go. So this first exercise, I, um, I would love for you to rate each area of your life on a scale from one to 10. Um, you may want to split your family up to two. So family could be the immediate people who live under your roof, and then it could be the, uh, your extended family. Sometimes you have crazy siblings and, you know, some... <laughs> Some different situations, but your immediate family um, situation could, could be a 10, could be a 9, could be an 8. So as you go through this, 
the reason we have to take inventory of this, where we are today, not six months ago, in the midst of this global pandemic, is just to be clear, because we can't fix what we don't realize is, is not broken. We have to understand, uh, sometimes we have to pick up the rug and see what's underneath, and we can't just keep brushing things under it. So be honest with yourself. No one needs to see this. This is just an inventory for you, um, just to get clear to, so we can move forward and work in your zone of genius. So scale from one to 10, where are you in your family dynamics? Where are you in your financial situation? Jackie, thanks to Jackie, I'm gonna be scoring myself pretty high because she's my amazing financial planner and she's been holding my hand every step of the way. Spirituality, where do you rate yourself? primary relationship. So I remember doing this exercise with a client one time and, and she gave herself a 10 for primary relationship. And I said, Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that you were seeing someone. And she said, I'm not, but I've never been happier. And so she gave herself a 10 because she was happy. So some people might, you know, not, not have a significant other in their life and they give themselves a two because maybe they want one or a zero, you know? So it's, it's all about where you are at your health, personal development. Contribution, I love this one. I think it's so important to give back. There's so many successful people, celebrities that they just don't understand what's missing from their life. If you don't have a purpose or a cause that's bigger than you, um, your life, in my, in my opinion, is empty and it's unfulfilled. So that's something um, I love working with my clients to infuse into their business. What's your give back? How are you giving back to the universe and, and society? It could be if you're passionate about pets, you know, uh, passionate about feeding the homeless, if whatever, however, or if you're doing pro bono work, whatever it is that, um, you know, how are you contributing to others? Fun. This is very, very important. Where are you on the fun factor and your life purpose and your career? Julia, welcome. There is a PDF in the event, but if you don't have the PDF in front of you, you can always print it later on. We're just going through and we're taking inventory of our life and our business and you're rating yourself on a scale from one to 10 where you fall in all of these categories because we can't fix what we we're ignoring. So I'm going to go ahead and move along to the next section if I can. So this next section is so important. You become the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. It's a famous quote by Jim Rohn, uh, who was Tony Robbins' mentor. So in this exercise, list five friends you spend the most time with and list three ways they add value to your life. I'm going to use another quote. You can't soar with the eagles if you're hanging around with the turkeys. So it's really important who you spend your time with. So when you think about these values, think about qualities like support, unconditional love, um, entrepreneurship. If you are an entrepreneur and all of your friends work nine to five jobs, they're not going to get you, right? So it's important and you have to be clear. So if you have a sister-in-law from hell who lives next door and she's at your house five times a day, guess what? She's one of the people you spend the most time with. So even if she has, doesn't have any great qualities, you need to list that. And this is very much, um, uh, this is based on the law of attraction as well. Because when we get down, sometimes I have clients that struggle coming up with five people they spend a lot of time with. But when we get down to the bottom, you can use one of the slots to attract a new person in your life, a new friend. Um, it's really important. I, I remember doing this with a client once. And, and every word out of her mouth was food and wine tasting and, you know, and she just loved gourmet food and traveling and taking cooking classes. We did this whole list and she was so proud of all of her friends. And I said to her, who's your foodie friend? And she's like, oh, I don't have one. And I said, wow, well, wouldn't it be nice to have a foodie friend if that's what you're really passionate about? And when you are working in your zone of genius, everything is balanced. 
So when you are surrounding yourself with the right people who are adding all of the elements, they're supporting you. Um, they might be your, right? Who's your fitness friend? Who's that friend that's going to say, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's join a class or let's do this cleanse or, hey, you know, let's, let's be healthy. Wh who are all these different people in your life? And so think about those five people you spend those time with and really think about those qualities. And so Gina, um, Jackie is asking, do we include adult children? So that's a great question. It depends how much time you spend with them. Um, I, I, I don't spend that much time with my kids. They're 18 and 19 and they work and they're in school and, you know, they're here, there and everywhere and they squeeze in mom time. So I wouldn't include them in me personally. But if you have, if you feel like your kids are your best friends and you're with them all the time, then sure, go right ahead. Um, but this is in your day to day. And, and people really want to include like their best friend of college that they see twice a year, but that's really not the case. Um, and what we're doing with this, once you, you, you understand this, it doesn't mean that if you, you know, pick, pick someone that you spend the most time with and you really can't come up with any way they add value, it doesn't mean you're going to take them out of your life. It might mean you bump them from, you know, an A friend to a B friend and you spend less time with them and then you'll attract someone else in. You want to be with people who are encouraging, supportive, they understand you, they're your cheerleaders, they really get you. And this is a great way to really stop and reflect. Who are you spending your time with? So this last question, and I'm not expecting everyone to get through every question on this call, but I figured the meatier, the better, because then you can have it afterwards. You can print the PDF and really work on it. So this last question, who supports you in your business? Is it a VA? Is it an assistant? Um, is it someone who's doing your social media? Is it, uh, who is it? Who is that person who supports you? And list three ways that they support you. It's also very telling because if you don't have someone who supports you, so it could be a business coach, it could be a VA, uh, maybe you have a, you know, a technical a friend who does all of your techie stuff. And I love this quote again, Tony Robbins, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the expectations of your peer group. Choose your peers wisely. If you're with people that are low vibrational and they do not have high expectations in their life and they're not grabbing that brass ring, guess what? They're not going to push you. It's kind of like playing tennis with someone who sucks more than you, in my case anyway. <laughs> you're not going to up your game if you play with somebody worse than you, right? You want to play tennis with someone who's better than you to, to, to push you up. Any questions about this exercise? So this is a fun one. And I don't expect you to do all of this right now. This, what aspects of your business do you enjoy the most? So there is a lot of lines here. Um, and this is meant to be a working document. So, you know, go back to it. What, acts, what aspects of your business do you enjoy the least? So everything from your business, from soup to nuts. So really think about that. Think about, do I enjoy checking my email? Do I enjoy responding on social media? Do I enjoy creating social media posts? No, Davia, I know you don't like doing social media, nor do I, right? So what is it? Um, it? Creating these PDFs. I didn't make this. I came up with all the idea and I put it in my Trello card and my VA did it. I can tell you that five years ago when I started my coaching business, I did everything myself. And I knew the first person I was going to hire was a VA to take these things off of my plate. So learning how to do them is really important. So understanding how you work your MailChimp, understanding how you're 
Hoot Suite and your Buffer and your Trello and, and all your sauna and all, all of your things, understanding how everything works, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the one to do it. Julie and I had a conversation this week about getting a VA and it was funny because I literally hung up the phone with Julia and then Davia, you had on um, ladies power morning with someone who is a VA. So I immediately made the connection <laughs> for the two of them. Um, so I love how the universe works, but what she was, she was talking about too, is, you know, understand what it is that you love to do, understand what, what you don't like to do. And I can tell you, if I were to make this PowerPoint, it's not only the PDF, but it was the slide presentation. Not, not a joke. It probably would take me five hours. I think my VA whipped it up in 30 minutes. So working in your zone of genius, but she would never come on and teach this. That's not her zone of genius. And so when you're clear on what you do and what you love to do, and Davia, you said something, I'm going to ask you to, to, to chime in. You said something the other day, you shared with me um, on that call with what one of your business coaches told you. And I loved it. It was just so profound about the pay scale. Oh, um, one of my very favorite mentors, she told me, what, she asked me, why are you spending your time doing, you know, minimum wage activities when you should be spending your time doing only two things, the thing that you do in your business and marketing your business, kind of getting the word out about your business. And aside from those two things, you should always find support to do those things. And um, Sandra Yancey, another one of the mentors that I really, really do treasure, she talks about how, and this is common knowledge because she talks about it all the time, how she cut off her cable and she cut back on a lot of things to make sure that she could afford in her business to have the support that she needed. She made that a priority over some of the other things and it has, well, you all know Sandra Yancey. She is the CEO of eWomen Network and she is amazing in her business. So I learn at her feet. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's, I, I had a client once. Um, she's an attorney and I asked her one day, I said, what, what, cause she, she was, she spent an hour creating a Canva um, cover photo for her, her LinkedIn page. And I suggested she, she have a VA do it. And I even gave her the name of mine at the time who was, who would have just done it for $25 an hour, you know, whatever would have taken her probably 15 minutes. And no, 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 I can do it. I can do it. And so it, I think it took like an hour or an hour and a half or something. She was trying to make one, one social media post in this, this banner. And I said, what's your billable rate? And she said, $350 an hour. And I said, wow. So you just spent what an hour and a half at $350 an hour when you could have paid a VA maybe 15 minutes to do that. And she was like, Oh, all right, I'll take her number. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, you, it's perfect. It, it makes perfect sense. I, I can give you the example of our assistant who is, um, you know, she's a college student. She, work she does a lot of those things for us and because of COVID she's actually working here in our office and not virtually from her university that she goes to but so we're watching her and she's making these posts for our Facebook in no time she's just churning them out and these are things that would take me and Sandy a whole lot of time and effort just to even get it done all the time that was needed was for me to outline to her what I needed and boom, it was like a magical thing. You'd have to have been there to understand, but it really felt like magic. I remember one time spending hours, like I don't even know, one of my five or six hours just getting out one MailChimp post because I couldn't get the graphic and shrinking it and, da, 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 and my VA was away and I had to do this thing and I was like, <gasps> When she came back, I sent her a $50 like Amazon bonus because I was like, I really appreciate you. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is digging deep and I love these questions. These questions um, are, this is just awareness. We're taking an inventory of our business and we're being aware. Uh, what do you spend the bulk of your time doing? Is it, is it surfing Facebook? And 
that might not be a bad thing. That's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If your clients are all on Facebook and you're on Facebook, it depends. Are you watching cat videos or are you engaging in groups and, and being on webinars and teaching and, you know, liking and commenting? So uh, it always annoys me when people say, oh, I'm, I try not to go on Facebook. Well, if you're an no, entrepreneur- Don't knock the cat videos, Gina, because, oh, and also <laughs> panda videos, they're amazing. Because I have to tell you, sometimes you do need a brain break and they can come in yes. handy. Yes, but if it's hours, if you're spending hours a day doing that, um, I trust me, I watch America's Funniest Videos and I like, I laugh at when people fall. So, you know, we all have our things. <laughs> So what causes you the most stress throughout your day? Are you technologically challenged? Are you, right? And are you, what, what, what is it? What's the biggest stress? Are you worried about bringing home the money? Are you worried about making connections? You know, what is it? What are you, what are you really stressed out about? Um, what do you wish you could spend more time doing? I wish I could spend more time just hopping on Zoom and coaching. That's my favorite thing to do. But sometimes we have to go out and right, network and meet new people and get new clients. What My favorite thing to do is to do the speaking engagements that I do. So in my ideal world, I know exactly what it looks like. We've had this conversation before, Gina. I get on stage. I make my dynamic, amazing presentation. It changes millions of lives because, you know, ripple effect. And then I retreat to my beach house. I love it. <laughs> and, and, you know, myself, I, I've always dreamed of living the laptop life and working from anywhere in the world. And as you know, I was just in Puerto Rico for two weeks and, you know, worked. Sometimes technology doesn't always support you, but worked remotely. And now being able to work on my back deck I, and work on vacation, I love it. Um, so what do you wish you could pay someone to do for you? And this, you know, I want you to think about it in your business, but answer the question both ways. Answer it in your business and then answer it in your personal life. It might be cut your grass. It might be meal prep. It could be taking out your garbage. It could be, you know, any, what are those things, cleaning your house? What are those things that you absolutely dread doing that if someone else could do them, oh, what a, what a, what a sigh of relief, right? That somebody else did that chore and that task. What keeps you up at night? And if you knew you wouldn't fail, what would you do? Would you write a book? Would you hire an assistant? Would you collaborate with someone else? Would you rebrand, change your business? And where do you spend the most money? In my business, the most money I spend is on my VA and she's worth every single penny. Or maybe it's for me too, it's e-woman. I spend a, a bulk of money for my e-woman membership as well as attending meetings worth every penny. Probably 75% of my business comes from e-woman. So you just wanna be clear on where your money is going and where you're spending it. And what are your personal and your professional strengths? So I do a SWOT analysis. Davia, have we ever done your SWOT analysis? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I am muted. I think we're scheduled to do that soon. You haven't done it, but it's your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And I, I do this in a, a, it's a program that I have, and it's a three coaching session. And from the SWOT analysis, the 90 minute, we dig deep, and then we have two more coaching sessions. But in that, you're really highlighting what your, your strengths and your weaknesses are. And it's the opposite of what people think. And they think, if I focus on my weaknesses, then, you know, I'm going to build my business and, and I'm going to grow. It's the opposite. Focus on your strengths. Absolutely. Highlight, highlight your strengths. That goes back to the page before this, where I asked you to list what all, all of your strengths are. You really want to focus on those strengths. It's like being technically challenged. I'm not going to focus on those weaknesses. I'm not going to continuously work on those. I'm going to work on what I'm good at. I'm great at connecting people. I'm great at presenting. I'm great at brainstorming people's businesses. I'm going to focus on that. And then that, if you only just focused on those top, even that 
top, you know, three or four things that you do really, really well, but you can't do that unless you understand what they are, unless you identify them. So this question is really, really important. Um, and what are you doing better than your competition? Great question. Any, would anyone like to share? Yes, Tavia. I'm nice. <laughs> I like that. Julia, what are you doing that's better than your competition? I'm gonna pick on you because we just chatted. Yeah. Um, so I'm helping um, any process, whether it's personal or business, or um, when you're creating something new or you're scaled and extending existing business. I'm helping people who are part of that process to align and to connect what is it truly theirs to deliver through this business, process, project, connect, connection, relationships. In other words, aligning your unique gifts and talents with what you are doing in life. And I do it in different ways. I do it through team cards. I do it through one-on-one -on -one sessions with people where it has to do with creating businesses and brands because creating brands is my specialty. I love it. Love it, love it. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So here's another one to 10. As you can tell, I love these type of questions. So this is just a, a great way to assess where you're at in your business. Um, so go through this on a scale from one to 10. Obviously 10 being the highest if you've done it and it's, it's there, so I have a mission statement and I post it on my business page and website. A mission statement could also be a brand promise. I'll share a little tidbit. Uh, I know Candy and I co-presented on branding and um, for the Women Business Summit and I shared my favorite book. And my, my favorite business book of all time is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. And uh, it's, it's really an expensive book. You can get it on Audible, but it really just helps you define what a brand promise is by, by answering these four simple questions. And um, so your mission statement can be a version of that. Um, the next one, I'm clear in my vision and I know exactly where I want my business to be one year from now. This is a tricky question. I changed some of the other ones um, based on where we are with the global pandemic um, because we really don't know where we're going to be. So um, I felt like it was a fair question. Had it, you know, if I was teaching this workshop in April, I probably would have taken that question off. But I think we, we all have a grasp right now. Of the, I, I feel the dust has settled with COVID. We understand the new way to live, how we're doing things. And I think it's time that we finally figure out where we're going to be in a year, given you know, the, the current state of the world. I have a written marketing plan for the year. So you probably had a marketing plan in January, which of course we threw those goals and all of those plans out the window when COVID hit. Um, but today, sit down, start thinking about how you're marketing your business. The way you marketed your business in February is completely different than how you're marketing it right now. So you need an updated plan, which probably should include, right, a weekly video at least, um, and many, many Zoom calls. <laughs> So it's changed, but although things have changed, it's really important for you to change with that and, and write, you know, write those things down. What does that look like? My bio is current and up to date on all of my social media platforms, business page and website. I believe everyone should have at least five or six different bios ready to go at all times. Your, your bio that's on your website, your about me section is really long and lengthy. If I'm taking the time to go to your website, I really wanna understand who you are. Your bio that's on your social media platforms is pretty small. Your LinkedIn one is pretty significant. Your bio when you speak, and if you're not speaking, you need to be. You need to come up with a signature talk because if you're an entrepreneur right now, 
in this where we are with COVID, everybody needs to speak because we're not out there socializing, meeting people. So you need a speaking bio. When someone asks me to speak, it's very easy for me to just email them uh, my PDF that has my bio, my headshot, my logo, all my topics, my descriptions. Um, so when people say, oh, I don't know what to do to catch up in my business or I don't have any clients, what can I do? This is the type of stuff that you do, the back stuff. So make a list of all of those bios and update them because your products and service and what your offerings have probably changed in the last few months. So make sure the bios reflect that. Does anybody have any comments about that? Davia, you're muted. Would you do me a tiny favor, Gina, and just post the link in the in the chat for the for the PDF because I've been sharing it, but it seems like the link I'm sharing isn't working for some reason. Okay. I what we could also do is we could email it out to everyone afterwards. Oh, okay. So let's do that. Let's email it out to everyone afterwards. Okay. And yeah, if you shoot me an email, just CC me on it, then I'll just reply all to everyone and then I can share it. So again, start with writing the list of those bios um, that you need and then one by one, go in and check them off. I just wanna, this is Jackie. I just want to make a comment to that, Gina, and that's awesome. And that's something I'm finding right this second I'm struggling with because I've been asked to send my bio and I'm sending the same one and it's really not applicable to everything. So you and I need to meet. Okay, for sure, for sure. Uh, okay. So time management, how do you rate yourself with your time management and your daily productivity? I think this is something that everyone struggles with. If this is an area that you struggle with um, and you're giving yourself anything under than a five, you know, post on your social media. What's everyone's favorite time management productivity book or tip or YouTube or TED Talk or um, podcast? You know, this is one area that I, I say focus on, on your strengths, not your weaknesses. But this is something that I really feel that people need to get a handle on. So if you're willy-nilly all over the place and you don't have a project management system, you know, I love Trello. I know, Davia, you have your favorite project management systems that you use, and I know you're playing with Asana right now, but um, this is something that's really, really important in order to be successful, to, is to understand and to improve that. I know who my ideal client or customers are for each product or service I offer. So... I teach this workshop, Who's Your Ideal Client Avatar. I absolutely love it. I've done it many times. I've, I've presented for eWoman. Divya, I'm not sure. I, I think you and I have done this together. Ideal Client Avatar. So your avatar looked completely different in February than it does right now, September 1st. Completely different. And, and that is who, who is buying your products or service. Right? And you want to create this fictitious character and understand you know, where they hang out both online and offline. In order to, to this, the whole point of this is to work in your zone of genius and do what you really love. But you have to understand who your client is and who you want to work with. Because if you're a massage therapist, you can massage anyone, right? Literally, baby, an old man, anybody. But who do you really want to resonate with? Maybe it's that athlete. Maybe it's you know, a stressed out entrepreneur. I don't know, whoever it is. Um, so you want to make sure you understand who you're selling to. Okay. Um, I have a handle on my social media, including my platforms. My ideal, and you, so you understand where your clients are hanging out. Not everyone's clients are on Facebook. Some are on Instagram. Some are on LinkedIn. Um, I have two clients in particular that I'm working with currently and their people are on LinkedIn. They're both attorneys Their people are on LinkedIn. So I, you know, they can do a little bit on Facebook and socially, but I'm, I'm really, you know, promoting them to push themselves on LinkedIn and really get, get their game on. Um, so understand where you're at, rate yourself. I know exactly where I want, where I want my business to be at the end of the month, the end of the quarter and the end of the year. 
So I really feel that this is applicable with COVID right now because it's a small bite size. And so, of course, the end of the month, meaning the end of September, uh, and the end of the quarter, of course, again, it's the end of the year. But think about that. Answer those questions now that we've just had a crazy four or five months. I'm happy with the current content on my website. Who here thinks their website needs to be spruced up? Well, I can say, Gina, I can comment on that because um, one of my VAs, yes, I have more than one, his, his only job is to work on our website. And he is currently working on the Ladies Power Lunch website and kind of completely reorganizing that. And that had to happen because with us going into the pandemic, going into quarantine, the events that we've had are changing. One, everything that we're doing is happening online now. So he had to change our um, our website to reflect that. Two, we're doing more events than we used to do. So instead of having one monthly in-person event, now we're having at least two events per week, some weeks three to five, depending on what the week is. And then our, as far as summits go, we had to have our spring summit online and we had to have our we are have we're gonna have to have our fall summit which we're supposed to as you know gina being austin texas we had to have it we're gonna have to have it online so everything's changing and you're right with all the changes what our view for ladies power lunch was at the beginning of the year is very different from what it is right now and so our website has to reflect that Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. And, you know, that that's something, uh, again, with the project management system, just organizing page by page by page. Um, and I, I'd like to tell people to start with their landing page. Think about the curb appeal. If you were going to sell your house, the real estate agent would tell you, you know, get a new floor mat, put a, uh, put a potted plant out there, pick the weeds out of the walkway, right? Trim the bushes because that's you never have a second chance to make a great first opinion. You know, so when people pull up to your front door, that's their first opinion. When people land on your website, that's their first opinion. So if you don't have the finances or the time um, to really go through and do the entire website, at least make sure your landing page looks great. That's just my two cents. So rate right where you're at with that. Uh, okay, I'm passionate about every service I offer and I feel I'm being paid exactly what I'm worth. That's a good one, right? So I can honestly 100% tell you, I, I, I give myself a 10 on this. I am happy with every service I offer. I only, I only have three, three packages and I love every single one of them. And I do feel I'm being paid what I'm worth. So I've discounted some things for COVID, but I feel it's appropriate right now. And when I teach a class or do a workshop or coach someone, I'm 100% happy. I can tell you honestly, that wasn't always the case. So it's a beautiful feeling when you're being paid what you feel you're worth and you, you show up 150% because if you're not feeling, if you don't want to do, it's just like in your business. If you don't want to do a task, if there's a certain service you're offering people that you don't love doing, stop doing it and do, do more, right? Think about who those favorite clients, you know, when you hang up the call or hang up the Zoom and you say, oh, or Davia, when you say wave goodbye to them and leave your office, if I only had five more of that, right? Though, those clients, that's why we need the avatar. And that's why you need to understand wh what it is that just truly makes you happy. My business model produces reoccurring revenue. Davia, you and I have had conversations about this, girlfriend. <laughs> so rate yourself on a scale from one to 10. How are people buying from you again? So my business model, I put all of my clients, once they, they you know, book my services, they hire me in a VIP page. I can tell you right now, every single month, anywhere between two to five call, additional coaching calls come in from past clients because that's my business model. 
that I keep serving them, keep serving them, keep adding value. And then I'm, I'm top of mind. So what are you doing for your past clients and your current clients? You have to work a lot harder to get a new client than to maintain the past, you know, your, your past clients. They were already your fan. So here's this last one, number and priority, three items you would most like to delegate in your business. Is everybody getting the theme with this? <laughs> Working in your zone of genius? So this is where the law of attraction is gonna kick in, right? What are those three areas you wanna, you wanna delegate? And, and wait, the perfect person I always feel like just drops right in your lap. The universe always delivers. So here's our last set of questions. What do you want for your business but don't have yet? Anything from financial to success to the number of clients, equipment, maybe it's a new laptop, uh, maybe it's an assistant, maybe it's a business partner. It's lonely sometimes being an entrepreneur. You don't have someone to run things by. What do you have in your business? but don't want things that are wasting time, getting in your way, um, unnecessary cost. Sometimes it's simple as signing up for a booking system to book your calls, right? It's game changing. Maybe you need a new phone. Uh, maybe you need to, you know, invest in some accounting software. It's w whatever, whatever systems you have, but just be clear. And, and you don't have to do it all, but to have a, have a little punch list is a great idea. What's most important to you in the next year? Map my three business priorities. Via, I'm sure yours are travel, travel, travel. Would anyone like to share candy? What are your or even just one or two of your business priorities. I would love to share. So priority number one is currently working on some new digital products and launching them and getting them out there because just figuring out ways to be available and to serve more and to do more. And I love everything you've been sharing, but for me, that's really the biggest goal is to really create the best product. Great, I'm a big techie, so <laughs> um, that's always something I'm passionate about, but it, it's, it's really important to be clear on that because there's so much to be doing at any given moment. And so this, this is really great, Gina. So I just wanna thank you for, for this, for the guiding questions, being in the right space, being in around, around the right company. Um, is so critical. But for me, it's in that, and, and Davia knows, Dr. Davia knows this, it's about being in that creative space to, to really get to that next level and that next goal. So that's what it is for me, is, is those, those scalable nuggets that I can share. So. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. That's great. I love your energy. I always love your energy. If you did nothing else, what things, what three things would make this coming year a success? This is a great question. Yeah, for, for us here in Ladies Lunch, I feel like if in the coming year we could have three summits, because that was that was our plan for this year. We we were hoping to have three and then we settled on two and then we almost only had one because I was going to completely cancel the fall summit. And then spirit said, you can't do that. It is necessary. People need to have this event. It has to happen. And so here we are. But if next year we could do the three, even if we have to do them virtually, that would be huge. Love it. Love it. Um, and this last question, what would you be disappointed in if you didn't achieve it? So be, be specific. Is it launching a program? Is it X amount of sales? Is it maybe getting your products or your services on five new platforms or 
getting your products on your website to sell or, or updating your website? What is it? What are those things? And this ties into the SWOT analysis, the strengths, what do you do well, your weaknesses, what could you improve without focusing too much on the improvement aspect, focusing on your strengths, what opportunities are out there, opportunities within your networks, within your networking groups, within your friends, within collaborations, which is you know, what we really dig into when we do that SWOT analysis. It's, it's amazing, it's a 90 minute call and blows everybody's mind. It's just so much fun. And threats, what is negatively affecting your business? And you could also Google a SWOT analysis and do it on your own. I always think it's fun to have someone coaching you and holding your hand and pushing you out, outside of your comfort zone. But if you wanna do your own SWOT analysis on your business, on your, your life, uh, that's always great. And I'll, I also recommend when I do the SWOT analysis um, with my clients, if they have someone in their business that they're really close with. So for me, it would be my VA um, to get their perspective and have them answer the same SWOT questions that you are because their perspective is always different. I, I like um, the idea of doing this with somebody, whether it's a coach or with, um, you know, doing it with a partner, because one of the things that I know is that we are all very good at giving advice, every single one of us. I blame all of you for that. However, when it comes to seeing ourselves, you know how they say it's not easy to see the frame, see the, see the picture when you're standing in the frame, it's really easier for somebody else to point out the opportunities to you because you might be so mired down or bogged down in the problem that you can't see what the opportunities might be. And that's what we're focusing on with Ladies Power Lunch with our Fall Summit. We're really focusing on working together to see how we can pull the opportunities of what seems to be a tremendously bad situation. So I'm really glad that you're taking some time to focus in on the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and also the, the threats. That's awesome. Thank you. So I'm stopping. Oops. I think my, my, my laptop is about to die. So I'm actually going to Stop my sharing and hand it over back to Davia. I have to go plug myself in here, so well, I'm going to stop sharing. So I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna take us back to the the gallery view, and um, I'm gonna go through. And while while Gina's getting herself organized, I'm just going to ask Lynn. You mentioned that for coming up you building a team is important to you. Would you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, well, especially with the businesses that I am involved in, um, success really depends on it. Um, in, in stretching out the, uh, the message of inspiring healthy living with, you know, one of the businesses and just in, getting the word out further so and and in financially um the compensation plan just makes sense to build a team so um financially in order to fill in that gap which is one of the weaker points that i rated myself on <laughs> according to gina's um i think it was the 10 10 you know one to ten it just makes sense for me to you know, link arms with people who are interested in, in doing something um, of the it, same. Um, that, that's really, really great. I picked on you because you had actually posted in the chat. Um, Jackie, you also posted in the chat. Did you have any comments that you're willing to make on, on camera? I did. Um, Gina, I can't, I, I said in the comment, sign me up for the SWAT. Definitely need that. Um, you know, I think I'm pretty good at my strengths, um, but I need to identify the weaknesses and then how I can 
offload those because I keep trying to get better at them and they really are weighing me down. And as we were going through these questions, I felt heavy. Oh my gosh, I felt so heavy. And I was like, yikes, this is, I got to do something about this quickly. Um, and then the bios is so crucial and, and you're so right. You need to have different bios for different um, audiences. And I don't have that right now. And that's so crucial because I'm struggling. And then that bogs me down too. So I'm, thank you so much for that. Those are only two small takeaways. The whole thing was fabulous. So we have, thanks Jackie. We have one, um, one of our speakers who's going to be on our fall summit. Her name is Bevan Mugford and she works for a company called Peach. They're an athleisure line of clothing. And she had me do some time ago, something called a strengths finder analysis. And wouldn't you just know it was right on target. My number one strength is my love of learning. There is there is no doubt about that. If I had the opportunity to be a perpetual student, and I almost was, I would be. I have I've gone to school probably for about a hundred years now. Like back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, I've been a student. But it's it's great to know what your strengths are because when you know what they are, I totally. When you were talking, I was like, you're preaching to the choir, Gina, because. If you know what your strengths are and you focus there and you take the things that you're not the greatest at and you offer them to somebody who's really good at those things, can you imagine how amazing your business ends up being? Because every single area of your business is addressed by somebody who is strong in that area. I love it. I love it so much. And I, I, you know, I'll add to that. Everyone says, oh, you know, I can't, I, not everyone, but people say, I can't afford a VA. Oh, I, I, you can't afford not to have a virtual assistant. And that, that's how strongly I feel about it. And I'll tell you, that would probably be the last thing I would cut in my business is having, having that support. And um, there are other creative ways, you know, there, you can barter. So think about that's something else uh, outside of a VA. When you look at the, those strengths, when you look at where you spend the most time and that list of what you truly love doing and what you don't like doing, look at your network, look at Ladies Power Lunch. We have some amazing talent that's on, you know, Davia's platform. Who can you barter with? What, what do they need, you know, and, and throw it out there. If you don't ask, you don't get. So ask the question, you know, I'm looking for support on X, Y, and Z, you know, um, who's open and willing to barter. And then of course you, you say what you'd be willing to exchange. Davia, that might even be like a fun thing to do once a month is throw a page out, that, throw a post out there and see what people want to swap and barter. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be facilitating this, but um, <laughs> I just, I think it's great. And I think, you know, you can swap a, a 30 minute or a 60 minute or a 90 minute service with someone. And this is, this can really be a game changer. Of course, you need to answer all of the questions on the PDF to understand where you need help and, you know, what's going to move the needle in your business. Um, so thank you, ladies. I, again, sorry about the, the change in scenery here, but I really do need to plug my laptop in. We, 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 enjoyed, we enjoyed the change in scenery. We enjoyed being able to experience the outdoors through, through you. Um, Gina, we were talking also ahead of this event. And, you know, one of the things that people are coming up against right now is it's it's really taking a toll on our mental health just because of the global pandemic we're indoors much more than we probably should be in the summertime we're sitting on zoom for hours and hours a day we're working from home we're not out and about we're missing out on that human contact that is so important for all of us do you have any words of advice for us as far as that goes when it comes to our businesses um well i have always said the secret to my success is extreme self-care so uh, I believe in pampering myself and um, I, some days I take two baths, most days at least one. And I like the bells and whistles and the, the bubble bath and the scented oil and the, you know, the nice soap. And that's just for me, that's personal. So uh, when I do this business, the uh, personal inventory, taking inventory of your life, one of the questions is list 30 things that bring you joy. 
And when you are in that funk or when you're frustrated in your business or in your life, look at that list. You know, it's as simple as something that brings me joy is flowers. I love my plants. I love my flowers. And I like to have fresh flowers on my table. And so if I'm in a funk and I, or I feel I need a little boost, pick me up, I might just go buy myself flowers. It's just simple. But having that list to reflect on, I think is really important. And again, Davia, you can put your cat videos on your list of things that bring you joy if you want. And their videos too. They're very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Cat videos are definitely not on my list, <laughs> but, but the beach is. And so every opportunity I get, I do go to the beach because it does bring me joy and, and you need that balance. Yes, um, absolutely. The beach is on my list too. Also a beach house. So anybody who goes to the beach house store, you can bring me back on. Um, Marianne, are you in a position to share? Did you have any key takeaways from today? I feel like we've been overlooking you a little bit. Oh, not at all. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, this is just totally overwhelming for me. <laughs> I have so much work to do, but it will help when I actually get the PDF in front of me because I don't have that. And so I just, I just wanted to listen. So I made sure that I did that rather than take a bunch of notes that I would forget half of what you said. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, so Davia is going to shoot me an email and I will reply with the P printable PDF um, and take some time. You know, if it's stressing you out, leave it and go back to it. But answering those questions, uh, I think is really going to be important. And if anyone I'm putting out there, if anyone like to, would like to hop on a complimentary discovery call, um, I'm, I'm happy to work through some Julia's raising your hand. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I know Jackie, you said you wanted to book the SWAT. So fantastic. We'll be in touch. Probably not on your birthday, but I love that you're buying that for yourself for your birthday present. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, and did we say happy birthday to Jackie? Did, I mean, did we sing happy birthday to Jackie? I know if I try to do it, it'll break the Zoom. So maybe we should skip that for today. Yeah, we did not. I, I did post a, a, a little birthday gift on her, uh, her page, though. Awesome. Dorina on, um, Dorinda on our Facebook group, because we're streaming live on Facebook, she says that she's really looking forward to seeing all the questions, Gina, on the PDF. So that'll be great. And Crystal is watching over on Facebook. I want to say hi to you, Ina, Wendy, all the ladies who are over there on Facebook watching, we really appreciate that you joined us to, today. Miss Gina, any last words for us? Um, my last word, uh, the last comment of the day is do your homework. Print out the PDF and do your homework. I, you know, Marianne, I feel you. I feel you so much because I remember the very first time I went through this with Gina, it was tremendously overwhelming because it requires that you take some time and take inventory of your whole life. Now, here's the deal, guys. Taking inventory of your whole life in a one-hour workshop on Zoom, it's just an introduction. I feel like the best value that you're going to get from this is taking, after get us getting together and doing this all together, is taking it and actually in a meditative way, just sitting with it and going through it systematically. And then I feel like, for me personally, my next step would be to reach out to some kind of partner to work through the list with me, whether it's Gina or whether you have somebody in your business that you're already working with. So there are all those things. Julia, did you have a comment? No, I, th I was gonna say, I, I did mean to say, like, I wasn't gonna speak, but I got excited when you said, get a partner to do it with, because I think it's a brilliant idea and I would love a partner to do it with. Yes, I feel like you and Marianne would be great partners together. I'm really, really sure because both of you, your headspace is in the same space. You're like all about just letting the universe make itself flow. And I think that's one of the reasons why Julia, you and I have become such good friends and why Marianne is like my spirit animal. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh. I remind you that upcoming on the 21st of September, 
the International Day of Peace. There are no mistakes about that. That's when we're going to be having our fall summit. Our theme is Transformation 2020, and our focus is going to be taking the obstacles of this national pandemic and turning them into tremendous opportunity. And the key thing here is doing it together. I hope you all can make it. I want to remind you that all the profits from our event are going towards the Ladies Power Lunch Foundation grant, which is a grant that we're building to support a woman-owned business that has been adversely affected by the pandemic. I invite you to share about the upcoming event with your friends. I'm sure you have friends who might find this event to be worthwhile and worth their time. So feel free to share about it. And I will see you all at our next event, which is going to be our next Power Prenote, Power Hour with Candy Sterling. And she's on the call with us today, coincidentally. Candy, before we hop off, you want to just say a little bit about what you're going to be talking about? Absolutely. So I'm going to be building off of all of the incredible wisdom that Gina has shared in terms of how to be positioned and empowered to deliver on all that Gina talked about and how to show up savvy and be confident and tools we can use um, as women in business to, to really make it happen. So I'm super excited and just super grateful to you, Dr. Davia, and also to Gina. Um, so thank you all and all the ladies on the call. This is such a treat. It really was. <laughs> Thanks to the ladies who joined us on our Facebook group. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks to Lynn, who was also here with us but had to hop off. And Gina, you are tremendous. My love for you is so great. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.